Welcome to the Moto IQ Garage. And in this segment, we have a really special car. We have a Porsche Cayman here, and we're building a unique track car for my friend, Jeannie. So what's so special about your requirements, Jeannie? Well, Mike, uh, I really love my Cayman, but I also love living by the beach where I have very little garage space. I have very little storage space in general, so I can't keep a trailer. If I want to build out a race car, it's got to be a race car that I can drive to the track mm -hmm. within any of the you know tra close tracks around here, which could be anywhere from you know a couple hours to a few hours and then back and forth. So I want a car that I can drive back and forth, but I don't want to compromise on the performance. So what can we do? It's a pretty difficult and it's going to be a challenge, but I think we're up to it. So what do you say, Jeannie? Well, I know you guys are up for it. You guys are the best and that's why I came to Moto IQ. So uh, can you tell me about what you're going to do to it? Show yeah. me what you got. Let's look at the parts. All right. So the uh, heart of any suspension system is the uh, coilovers. And we got what we think is a really good combination that's uh, race ready and streetable. So we have the KW Club Sports, the remote reservoir, uh, the uh, compression and rebound adjustment is uh, independent, so we can really tune it into whatever tire combination you might be running uh, for the day. The bodies are stainless steel, so they don't corrode, so there's no sticking of the spring seat. We're going to be doing aero on your car, so that means you have a diffuser and splitter and stuff, and you have like subterranean parking at your apartment, right? Yep. And there's no way that that's going to get in there. So what we did is we added the uh, KW HLS system. Perfect. So what this is, it's actually a hydraulic lift that'll enable you to raise your car up a couple inches with a flick of a switch. Uh, it has a hydraulic pump, the hydraulic things, and uh, you can easily raise your car to get over speed bumps or get into your garage. So I think this is a really good compromise between streetability and being able to get a nice, good performance ride height. Another thing is all the spherical bearings in your camber plates are all sealed. So there's rubber boots. So you don't have to worry about mud and stuff getting splashed up there and ruining your camber plates. So I really feel that this is a really good combination for uh, street and track use. So for race cars, we want to get rid of all the squishy rubber and all your suspension bushings because when you're running uh, high grip tires put a lot of side load on everything and mm -hmm. a lot of brake load and acceleration. All that rubber deflects and that could cause your car to feel twitchy and imprecise. So we're using Terran Engineering links uh, to replace a lot of your stock control arms. Okay. And uh, these are spherical bearings, so it completely gets rid of the rubber and there's no compliance. That's awesome. It's good to be a little bit noisier and maybe a little bit more vibration and stuff, mm -hmm. but in some bumps, it'll actually be smoother because there's less friction, but it'll be definitely louder. Um, everything's adjustable, so we can fully adjust your uh, camber, caster, toe, and kingpin inclination. So a lot of flexibility to set up your car to your driving preference exactly. Um, we also have uh, teared tie rod ends, so that way we can adjust out any bump steer that we might get from lowering your car. So this will make it a lot less twitchy. We've got a, a strut tower brace and a rear subframe brace from Redline. Mm -hmm. So this will reduce a lot of the flex and uh, this helps your car be more su sensitive to suspension tuning and it also helps the ride, believe it or not. So um, all this stuff will really help you on the track It'll have a slight impact on your street ability, but not too bad, and you probably don't care because it's you're going to the track. Yep. You're not cruising around with your parents. So. I'm okay with a little bit of change in the, the drive there, as long as it gets me there. Yep. What we have here is some control arms from Terrid Engineering. Now, these are like CNC machined out of billet aluminum. They all have all spherical bearings. And we also have spherical bearings instead of ball joints with a long shank so we can adjust your roll center location. Mm -hmm. um, we can also adjust the caster to a degree right here through this eccentric. So fully adjustable, no flex or give. Uh, we can control your roll center. It's going to be awesome. Right here we have some uh, Terran Engineering rigid motor mounts. Now, from what I understand from the guys at Terran, the stock motor mounts are so soft, so when you're doing... Uh, transitional maneuvers like that, mm -hmm. the motor actually shifts because uh, the stock mounts are so soft and it actually throws the car off and you can feel that it has some really bad feedback. So they recommended to me to get these motor mounts that keeps the engine in one place 
and makes the car more stable in transition. Another great thing for uh, a multi-purpose car like what you have is uh, adjustable sway bars. Now we got these sway bars from Terran Engineering and uh, you can adjust a lot of the car's balance through the uh, sway bars. So if you want more oversteer or understeer, uh, you can adjust the, the sway bar stiffer or softer to uh, control that and adjust it. Now at the track, you might want more oversteer bias, so you can adjust the bars quickly. Uh, you might not want that when you're driving around the street, a more conservative setup that tends to understeer. So that can, that can all be done. You can adjust the uh, bars by putting the end links through all these uh, holes. Okay. And it can make about 100% overall difference in stiffness depending on what hole combination you use. Um, these are like uh, hollow, they're really light. And uh, all the end links are spherical bearings so there's no rubber to give like the stock parts. And uh, the stock parts are actually really spindly and weak. And, uh, they could break under track use, but these are many times stronger. So overall, it's a pretty good deal. Yeah, they feel really sturdy, really well made. Well, the next most important thing is the brakes. If you have a uh, brake pad that works really good at elevated track temperatures, mm -hmm. normally that sucks on the street. So right. it's super noisy, super dusty, and it also uh, wears out your rotors super fast. Mm -hmm. Now, I asked the guys at StopTech to design a really cool brake system for you. Now, I told them that this was a dual purpose car and you'd need to drive on the street and at the track. And once you got to the track, you wouldn't want to pull off your wheels and change pads. So they came up with a system that enables you to drive on the track with uh, regular street pads. So you can just go to and from without worrying about that. And you're not going to have dusty, noisy, rotor ruining pads when you're driving on the street. And these are huge. Yeah, um, they're 355 millimeters, so they're bigger than the normal Cayman kit. And they also have what they call a wide annulus. So the um, actual swept area of the rotor is really, really wide. Mm -hmm. And they use a taller brake pad, so you have maximum, maximum pad area. These rotors are also a vented, and they have CFD designed vanes to pump a lot of air through them. So they run cooler, and uh, they're also fully floating. So what that means is the rotor can float independently of the hat mm -hmm. and uh, you won't get uh, so bad uh, knockback. There's flex in your suspension and it won't uh, distort like a cone when it gets hot because uh, since this can move freely of this, this won't act like a heat sink and cause differential temperatures and cause the rotor to cone out. So it'll improve the brake feel. Um, you have like these Inconel cone washers here that put tension on everything so it won't freely rattle. Mm -hmm. So it won't be too noisy when you're driving around on the street. Oh, so this is a fully custom made set. Right, and if, if it works out well for you, the Stop Tech is probably gonna start making these as, as an awesome. option for people that have the same, same interests. I'm excited to test this. So your front Front caliper is a six piston and it's huge. Uh, the caliper is super stiff with a one piece billet bridge. Um, it's, it's CNC milled out for lightweight. It's all pocketed in any area that doesn't contribute to strength. It has uh, silicone seals that are high temperature. A lot of uh, racing brakes don't have the dust seals so their service life on the street is short but you have full seals and you're nickel plated so I don't know if you know this, but a lot of guys with track cars, like if they have red calipers, they turn brown. Yeah. Yeah, and it looks that. all crappy. Yours are going to look good no matter how hard you brake. This won't discolor. These look amazing. Your rear brakes are uh, four piston. Uh, you have these stainless abutments, so the brake pad won't chew into the caliper body. And the coolest thing is um, you have an integrated parking brake drum. So you have this lightweight alloy hat, but you still have the full uh, parking brake. So even though these brakes are a lot bigger, there's a chance they could be lighter than your stock brakes. So Jeannie, where the rubber meets the road is critical for your track performance, right? Absolutely. But you still have to have something that's streetable. So I think I got something for you. Okay. So for tires, we got you the Nito NT-01. And this isn't like a super sticky qualifying tire that'll wear out on your way to the track. This is actually a DOT approved race tire. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, it has a UTQG of 80, so it still is streetable, and you can get a few thousand miles on the street on these without going bald. And you can get a whole race weekend, no problem, no matter how hard you drive, probably, without wearing them out. So you can easily make it to the track, even the NorCal track, like Sears Point or Laguna, mm -hmm. make it back and drive both days, and you'll still have tires. Right. I think this is a good compromise. So for wheels, we wanted to get you something really cool, too. Uh, we got you some Titan 7 wheels. Now, these are fully forged, uh, high-pressure forging, so you have good grain flow and good compactation of the metal. Um, that, that, that allows them to make the wheels really light. But uh, the forging still makes them really ductile, so they can take a hit. So if you hit an FIA curb or something, they're not going to bend or, or go off. Mm -hmm. um, these wheels have some cool features, like they have knurling on the bead, so you won't spin the tire on the bead or de-bead so easily. So overall, they're great wheels for the money, and uh, shoot, they're great for any price. I think those are going to work really good for you. Do you like the color? I love them. They look great. So it's been a few weeks. Uh, we've been working away on Jeannie's car to get it all like ready for the track. And this is phase one. We did the suspension, wheels, tires, and brakes. You want to go see what we did? Yeah, I'm really excited to see what's been done. All right, let's get under the car. All right, G, so let's talk about your rear suspension first. Okay. So your Cayman actually is a pretty good handling car stock. It has pretty high quality components. Yep. But one of the things that messes it up for the track is it's not very adjustable. So uh, we uh, made it so it's fully adjustable and we have a lot of control of your setup. Uh, so one of the things we did is we replaced the stock lower control arm with this uh, uh, cup car style um, control arm from Terrid Engineering. It's got a lot of adjustability to it, right? Yeah, so we could adjust the overall length of the arm with shims right here. Just like, uh, I guess like a GT3 arm is like that too. And uh, we could also adjust the uh, trailing arm position through this eccentric bushing. That came in handy because we adjusted the uh, trailing arm pivot point in your chassis to reduce your anti-squat. We actually moved the pivot down uh, with adjusting shims. I don't know if you can see it there. We see all the yeah, shims are on the that. top. Yeah, so we moved the pivot point down and we did that to reduce your anti-squat because the, this particular chassis has a whole bunch of anti-squat from the factory. And these cars are known to hop in high speed and uh, mid speed corners. Definitely felt that. Um, so, a lot of that is uh, chassis wind up caused by the extreme anti squat. So, uh, when we lowered your car a lot, that took out some of the anti squat. And a lot of it we also took by lowering the front pivot. So, when you did that, uh, this thing gets long and the, and the uh, wheel gets shoved backwards in the wheel well. So, what we did is we used the uh, this is a course adjustment to recenter the wheel and the wheel well. And we also did some fine adjustment by um, adjusting the overall length because the tarot, uh, trailing arm is adjustable. So you can see like it's threaded with jam nuts. Mm -hmm. So you can screw it in and out and, and adjust the length. Uh, we wanted to have as much uh, overlap in your threads as possible. So what we did what does is, that do? Um, makes it stronger. Like if this is backed way out, mm -hmm and your threads are really exposed. Uh, the thread acts like a stress riser and it makes the part weaker. Okay. So we actually move this forward and then uh, screw this in so your threads are hardly even showing. And you have maximum engagement and it's less likely to come loose and uh, it's better for strength to be that way. So is this gonna handle a little bit more like um, similar to the GT3 that I have? Well, it'll probably handle better in some ways than your GT3 because it's a mid-engine, so your weight distribution is better than the, the rear engine like your 911. Mm -hmm. We replaced your stock anti-sway bar with this uh, tarred adjustable one. Now, you see how it has four holes here? Yeah. It's four-way adjustable, so um, if you put it in this one, the bar is stiffer, and if you put it in this one, the bar is softer. And the difference between the full stiff and full soft is like probably about a 50% difference in overall stiffness that the bar contributes. Wow, that's a lot. Plus the bar is bigger diameter, so the bar itself is 30% stiffer than stock. All, all things remain the same. Uh, I talked to a lot of guys that race the 
the Cayman Cup cars, mm -hmm. and they recommend that I start in the full soft position. Okay, that was yeah. I was just about to ask why we start here. So, when would we know to start uh, tightening it up a little bit? Well, like if you're driving on the track, and then if you feel like the car is uh, understeering too much, and we do everything possible to increase your front grip, and you mm -hmm. still feel like the car is not rotating well. Uh, we can start stiffening this up to get it to rotate. I mean, if your car is understeering, of course, we're going to work on increasing the front traction first. But if we run out of options in the front, uh, we can uh, make this stiffer to get better rotation. We use the uh, Tarot adjustable end links. So that way, when um, we adjusted the links, so uh, you can use the full arc of adjustment without things getting into a lot of angularity and binding up. And we also use the adjustment to take uh, all the uh, preload out of the sway bar. Because sometimes when the car settles and stuff, uh, you know, one side might be a slightly higher than the other, and then the links can actually cause preload on the bar. So it can make unequal handling, balance from side to side, uh, difference between right and left turns. So the adjustment enabled us to take the preload out. Some other things that are cool is your car had rubber bushings at the uh, control arm pivots. Uh, that's good for a nice smooth ride, but now uh, you have spherical bearings at both ends. So that means that there's no give, no play, and your alignment's going to stay true no matter what. It'll feel pretty solid. Yeah, it'll be solid and responsive. Uh, same thing with your, uh, your toe links. Uh, your stock ones did have some sphericals, but now you have sphericals with a lot of adjustability. Uh, and one of the cool things about these tarot links is you just have like a pinch bolt right here. So you could just let loosen the pinch bolts and spin it without taking it off the car to, when you adjust your toe. So you have fast at the track toe adjustments if you would ever need it. And uh, no flex, no give or anything. Uh, your trailing arms are also all spherical bearings. Mm -hmm. So this is like a full cup car, race car suspension. There's no rubber, no give, total response. So what kind of feedback should I be looking for when I'm tested, uh, testing the car out to see what additional adjustments we might need? Uh, I think at first we'll go out there and then uh, we'll see if you like the overall balance, like mm -hmm. if the understeer oversteer balance is good. And if you can get the car to rotate and you can come off the corners hard without having to back off because it wants to go sideways. Okay. Um, make sure it turns in, uh, doesn't plow and rotates. And uh, you know, if we get everything right, this car should actually be a lot easier to drive than a, a stock came in. Like it'll be sweet and not have like any, any weird habits once it's dialed. I think the last time we got in it just to play around, uh, the ride actually wasn't too bad. It was definitely stiffer, but it was still very drivable. Yeah, it's pretty amazing too, because um, one of our plans is we're going to get a Veris engineering aero system on this. That's going to look so cool. Yeah, and it actually makes like a thousand pounds of downforce at 120 miles an hour, which is uh, super significant. And it's also uh, designed with CFD and some limited one tunnel and on the road testing. Yeah. So uh, the aero balance is good for front to rear, but uh, to accommodate um, that aero load, you're running really stiff springs. You're running 14 kg in the rear and 12 in the front. Mm -hmm. And that is like um, five times stiffer than stock, if you can believe it. And it's uh, almost twice as stiff as the standard KW Club Sport Springs. So the fact that you, know, like you think it doesn't ride that, that bad is a pretty good testament to how well the KWs can be adjusted and how, how good the damping is. On yeah, them. they feel amazing. Still feel really good just driving around on the street. Yeah, and it doesn't feel five times stiffer than no. stock, does it? No. Um, and the bump response is good because if the car is riding stiff, you know that contributes to tire shock and the loss of traction and at the track. So race car doesn't necessarily mean stiffer is better. Uh, the other reason why we want to go so stiff is that um, having the correct attitude control is uh, really essential for your arrow to work right. And you don't want to get pitch sensitivity where the car is moving around, which causes your underbody or your splitter to lose downforce. So for the arrow to work consistently, 
it's pretty important for it to be uh, pretty stiff. Well, we're going to have to do a few more adjustments after we put the arrow on and test it out, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course we will. Um, while we're under here, you can look at this. This is a Renline uh, lower brace with uh, tow hooks. Mm -hmm. And uh, your suspension is so much different than stock that even though your car has a really stiff chassis from the factory, uh, we thought we might have to uh, brace it up. So this is going to help uh, reduce torsional twist. And uh, that should help hold the alignment truer, give you better response. And it's also responsible for your better ride. And if we ever trail your car, it's a good place to tie it down. Well, so now that we're looking down at the uh, eye level here, you can probably see some of the cool stuff we did, like uh, your brakes. Yeah, this is definitely very different than what I had. Yeah, it's, uh, it probably has close to 50% more swept area than your stock brakes. Uh, this is like a StopTech trophy kit. Um, it has a uh, 335 millimeter by uh, 28 wide rotor, which is, God, I think your stock is only 290 or something. So it's, it's way bigger, way thicker. There's way more venting inside, way more air circulation inside the rotor. Um, it has an alloy hat and an alloy drum for your parking brake, so it's a lot lighter. Um, the caliper itself is a four piston. Your stock piston, uh, stock caliper is a four piston too, but this one's a lot bigger. It has like a lot bigger pads, a lot more swept area. Um, when it comes to like a brake pad size, the bigger uh, an area, the longer they last. Uh, what, what the idea was is we wanted to make it so you could have a brake pad that's streetable that will still hang in there at the track. So that's why you have so much more area and thermal mass. Um, your stock brakes would work at the track, but we'd have to use a really aggressive racing compound. And uh, that would like just totally chew up your rotors at uh, street driving temperatures. So these are just regular street pads? Uh, they're high performance street pads. Normally those won't cut it on the track with uh, our compound tires. But um, in a huge brake like this, uh, we think it's not gonna be any problem at all. Um, cool. So it's the same size brakes uh, as the cup cars and the, the same brakes that they're running in Grand Am and these things. So you're going to have plenty of brake. Sweet. That's what I need. Late braking. And what are these? Uh, I don't remember having these before. Uh, that's a braided steel brake line. And the advantage of that over your stock rubber lines is um, when you apply brake pressure, it could go up to like 1800 PSI or so. And the uh, rubber brake line could swell uh, when you step on the brake. And that makes like for a mushier pedal. Um, th this brake line is a lot, um, doesn't expand under pressure. And so more of your brake pedal force is gonna go into your caliper to stop the car. That'll give you better brake feel. Your ABS will work better. Um, That's amazing that you get all that just from having these. Yeah, actually like braided steel lines can make a pretty big difference in how the brakes work on any car, not oh, just yours. Never would have thought about that. Um, here's your KW Club Sport uh, coilover and HLS system. You can raise this car um, almost an inch and a half with a push of a button. And is this separate for front and rear? Yeah, we thought we've also did it so you can work the front and rear independently because your car's gonna have a flat bottom with the aero system. And if you can get the front low and then rake the un undercarriage, uh, if you can rake it, you can create like uh, way more downforce. Also, if your wing's making a lot of downforce, you can raise it up so the suspension's less likely to get bottomed out from the downforce that your wing and rear diffuser is gonna create. That's cool. Now the guys at Ferris, has, they've done some testing with laser ride height indicators and their test car, the uh, ride height varies um, 80 millimeters depending on how fast they're going on the track. And they're running a, uh, a stock shock with H&R spring, which is probably only 20% different than stock. And they're having this tremendous ride height variation. But, um, you know, that's why we have this waist stiff spring. So your uh, ride height will remain stable, uh, hopefully even with a, a lot of aero load. So can you help me understand, like, what would some um, situations be situations be where it would be best to start trying to adjust independently? Uh, so, like, let's say you're at Buttonwillow, right? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so you're going into turn one. So I would raise the back of the car and I would keep the back of the car high all the way until you get onto the front straight. And then I would hit the button and lower the back of the car to reduce drag. And uh, it'll probably reduce drag by about 50% when it's not raked because wow. it affects your wing angle too, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so you might be able to pick up like three, four, five, even more mile an hour down the straight. And then the braking zone, hit the button, raise the back of the car. So when you're on the twisty back part of Button Willow, you're going to have all the downforce you can get. Okay. That's so that, sweet. Yeah, that helps. And also when you're driving around the street, you can like raise the car up and not scrape the uh, underneath. Yeah, because I mean, this is the whole point of having this car is to be able to still drive it around on the street. I mean, not like a grocery getter necessarily, but at least be able to drive it to and from the track. And with the HLS, we didn't have to set a compromised uh, medium ride height. Mm -hmm. So you can drive on the, uh, on the street like you have your full on race ride height and then you can raise it when you drive on the street. And that way you don't have to worry about dragging the bottom or breaking your splitter off. Nice. These springs are like 50% stiffer than the, the springs that actually come with the club sport. But the, uh, the adapting is so adjustable that the valving can easily accommodate the way stiffer spring and we don't have to revalve. So that's a, a really cool thing about the club sport. Uh, you might not know, but we could independently adjust your comp compression and rebound damping. There's a knob at the bottom and then there's a knob at the top uh, that's really handy, especially with a car with a lot of aero that we can do both independently. So we can really dial your car in. Cool. Um, I think that's about it for the back. You, you want to go look at the front? Yeah, let's go check it out. So in the front of the car, the stuff we did is very similar to the back. Uh, you have your uh, cup car, GT, GT car style lower control arm. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. It's adjustable with shims and we can adjust your... Uh, tension rod location with the eccentric here. And you also have spherical bearings for that solid, uh, direct, non-compliant pivot. Mm -hmm. So there's no give. Um, every, every bit of motion uh, is coupled to the chassis and the steering and the suspension. I mean, this is uh, pure race car stuff. And uh, it's hard to see from where you're at, but we used a really uh, wide shim here that's a little bit more than a half inch wide. So... Uh, we're increasing your front track by an inch. Okay. Like on the, the stock car, uh, the front track is more narrow than the rear. Uh, and that's the way Porsche designed it. But uh, we want to passively reduce understeer as much as we can. And the wider the track, the less weight is transferred to your outside wheel. And the more equally you use both tires. So uh, we increased the front control arm length as much as we could. You know, like a lot of guys would use spacers, um, but spacers uh, screw up your uh, scrub radius and your steering geometry. So Yeah, we, I had spacers on the car before. Yeah, we got rid of them. An interesting thing is, you know, like how we were messing around with your rear anti-squat? Mm -hmm. Now, like a lot of stock cars um, have like a lot of what they call anti-dive geometry in the front, mm -hmm. but um, race cars generally don't have very much and we generally modify the car to re remove the anti-dive but uh porsche i, I believe because the front of the car is so light uh the stock car doesn't have very much anti-dive geometry in it so when we lowered your car you actually had a uh, pro dive geometry so then if you hit the brakes the suspension geometry would actually cause the front of your car to suck down. So you need to pull it back a little. Yeah, so instead of lowering the front pivot, uh, I actually uh, had to raise it here. Uh, so um, that corrects the arm geometry when the car's at really low ride height. So now when you step on the brakes, it's going to be neutral. It's not going to want to, to uh, uh, suck down. Okay. Uh, we have like a bigger anti-roll bar from Terran Engineering that's uh, uh, five-way adjustable in the front. And this bar um, is about 40% stiffer just with the added thickness. But uh, with all the extra holes, you can go plus or minus about 50% in, in your overall I stiffness. I see it in the middle one. Yeah, I, I went in the middle on the, I, I talked to like guys that race these in uh, Porsche Cup. Mm -hmm. 
and they recommend that I start in the middle and the front. Okay. So if you find the car understeers, uh, you know, we can soften the bar. If, if you find that it uh, actually is too darty in the front and, um, and, it, and it has way too much um, um, midterm and you're getting like oversteer, we can like reduce the, that by going to stiffer in the front. Okay. So we have full adjustability here. Uh, we also have the adjustable end links, uh, so we can take the preload out of the bar when we corner weight it and stuff, which we've done. Um, the the uh, the tension rod, uh, the Tarrant one is fully adjustable for length, so you can adjust its position here as the coarse adjustment, and then adjust it here for the fine adjustment. You can probably see how we move the pivot forward. Yeah. So that's so we have the most thread engagement with the spherical bearings gotcha. for best strength, just like what we did in the rear. Mm -hmm. And we, had, we gave you uh, seven degrees of positive caster. Um, some guys- What does that do? Uh, caster kind of gives you straight line stability, better on-center steering feel. And uh, you go to negative camber uh, on your outside wheel when you turn the wheel. Mm -hmm. So that kind of helps your, your grip. Okay. Um, we're running a, a little bit less, like a lot of Porsche guys run nine degrees, but you're running a significantly wider front tire. And uh, I, m me personally, I think when you run a wider tire, you don't want that much steering tip or tip in the camera curve when you steer. So I'm running about what the stock caster is instead of more like what a lot of guys do. But we'll see, if it doesn't work out, we can always increase the, the caster. Okay. Now we went with a really aggressive alignment when we set this up. Now we're running four degrees of negative camber, uh, seven degrees of positive caster and eighth inch toe out. Yeah, you never would have been able to do that on a stock car. Yeah, and then um, your tires won't last that long in regular street driving, but on the track, uh, it should work really good. Um, the amount of camber we're running is kind of based on what um, a lot of the guys racing cup cars are running. I mean, they run as much as five degrees negative, but I think for the tire we're running, that's a little bit excessive. Mm -hmm. In the rear, we're running uh, three degrees of negative camber and an eighth inch toe in. And uh, I think that's going to work really well. And uh, we can test and change it to whatever suits you. Let's go check out uh, what's upstairs a little. Um, these are a StopTech Trophy six piston front calipers. Mm -hmm. um, the difference between the trophy and the regular stop tech is you see how they have all these milled out areas. Yeah, what's that for? Uh, well, they, they analyze the flex and everything of the caliper using uh, FEA, finite element analysis, and any, um, that enables them to spot excessive material. So they go in with a CNC machine and machine out all these areas that don't really contribute to strength and just make the caliper heavier. Um, and generally, they could take about three quarters of a pound off every caliper by nice. doing that. That's some serious nerd stuff right there. Yeah. We also have the KW Club Sport suspension, and we're running a pretty stiff 12 kg front spring. It's uh, six times stiffer than your stock one. Um, that's to accommodate the aero loading that we're talking about. And uh, you also have double adjustable um, compression and rebound damping. Mm -hmm. And the KW has like a lot of latitude in there. So you can run the stiffer spring without having to re revalve the shock. So awesome. all pretty cool stuff. I am learning a lot. Yeah, and you, um, this is going to work really good on the street. Yeah, there's so much detail here. That's what I really like about all the work and, you know, StopTech and KW and all these companies that are building these kinds of things that they pay attention to all the little things and... Yeah, that's stuff that I would never would have thought of. Well, basically, you have the, the same suspension as a uh, cup car, and uh, it's full racing suspension. You're actually going to have more aerodynamic downforce than the cup car and uh, similar engine performance. So it should be really interesting to see what this will do on the track. So having good tires is a really important part of a track car. Mm -hmm. It's all about grip, right? Yep. And so we put some cool tires and wheels on here. Now, lightweight wheels are really important. Um, less weight on the wheel, you have less unsprung weight, so your suspension works better. 
and less uh, rotating inertia, so the car works better under braking and it accelerates faster too. Um, so for wheels, uh, we chose the Titan 7 wheel. Uh, this is a full forged wheel and it's a really good wheel for the price point. So it's fully forged. That means you have um, the wheel is smashed out of a billet of aluminum into a die. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the aluminum grain flows all the way around the spokes in the correct orientation. Uh, grain is kind of like the same as grain in the wood. You know, like how uh, you can break wood uh, across the grain really easily, mm -hmm. but uh, with the grain, it's really strong. Same thing with aluminum. And uh, orienting the grain the right direction is everything with strength. Uh, these Titan 7s are forged with a special process with 100,000 tons of pressure. And I believe that's one of the highest uh, pressures uh, in forging wheels in the industry. I hear a lot of great things about Titan 7, and I see a lot of people using them. Yeah, and with the forging and the uh, computer-aided design, they're able to really optimize um, the uh, spoke geometry and, and the rim barrel to get a really good weight-to-strength ratio. So... So it looks good, but there's function to it, too. Yeah. You know, like, it's not maybe the lightest wheel made, but it's probably, when you compare strength and weight and cost, it's probably one of the best overall wheels. Now, your rear wheel is a 18 by 10, which is quite a bit bigger than your stock wheel. Now, your stock wheel is a 19, but we went to an 18 because there's a lot more choices in um, race compound tires and the tires are cheaper. So when you're going on the track, you're probably gonna be going through tires and you'll have less expensive tires and a better choice of tires at eight with 18 inches. I mean, there's a lot of people that are always, you know, you always hear people wanting to get bigger wheels, but that's not always the case that it's actually better. Right, and uh, with an 18 inch wheel, your overall diameter is slightly smaller, so your gear ratio will be better and the car will actually probably be a little bit less sluggish. Um, so with the 18 by 10, your uh, rear tire size is uh, 275 40 18. Um, we used the Neato NT01. Now this is a race compound tire, but it's not like the super slick gumballs that don't last that long. Uh, NT01 is kind of a um, race tire for enthusiasts. Uh, so it's designed to last pretty long for a race tire. And you might get as much as 10,000 street miles uh, on your car. Wow, really? Yeah, That's maybe not with the aggressive alignment, but um, you could probably get two full weekends at the track or maybe even more with these. And, um, you know, the compound's not the softest, but it's designed to wear well and uh, be able to go through multiple heat cycles without getting all hard. Um, if you ever had uh, tires that are sensitive to heat cycle, you probably noticed that they grip really good the first couple sessions on the track and then they started getting slippery and then the the tires stopped wearing so fast and it's because uh, the more heat cycles the rubber tends to oxidize and get harder and then it doesn't wear as quick and then it grips way less but uh, needles are good all the way till the end of the tread and they're really consistent so for um you know like the ultimate and time attack speed they're probably uh, not the, not the tire, but for um, bang for the buck and for long wear and consistent grip through the whole entire life of the tire, they're one of the best. So that's why we chose this for you. Like I know you don't have a trailer, so you have to drive your car to the track. Yeah, tires have got to be able to do that and last too. Yeah, so I think it's a good compromise for your intended use. I'm not a big expert on tire tread or anything for, for track use. Um, is there anything special about this tire tread? Um, well, Design. it's not the greatest for uh, rain driving on the street, of course, but you notice you have big blocks on the outside and smaller ones on the inside and two uh, grooves that go around the cir yeah. circumference. Now, these big blocks on the outside, uh, the shoulder of your tire on the outside is the most heavily loaded on the cornering. So this almost acts like a slick and it doesn't squirm around like smaller blocks would when the when the tread squirms it gets hotter which can cause chunking and it also causes the car to be sluggish in response so this is a big block and it almost acts like a slick now the the t smaller blocks on the inside 
if you do run into water, help drain that better. And so do these grooves uh, that go around the circumference. Now, if you were to shave these tires to like uh, 430 seconds, this whole tire will turn into a slick with only the two center grooves. So some guys that are really serious about time attack with these tires will actually do that. Just wear them out first? Uh, yeah, but for you, I'd just say just wear them out. <laughs> Let them become slicks on their own. Okay. Um, I guess uh, another cool thing about these tires is that typically tires have a polyester body. The body on these tires is made out of rayon, which is a lot more heat resistant than polyester. Um, it has like two belts, uh, steel belts, and it has a, uh, a uh, kind of folded bead construction on the sidewall to mm -hmm. where like the plies go, fold around the bead and come halfway up. And that makes for a really stiff sidewall for better response. And uh, um, it doesn't quite need as much negative camber because the tire won't flex and distort so much under load. Um, we're running the 275 in the rear and uh, a 245 47, uh, 18 in the front. So that's up two sizes from stock. So you have more than an inch uh, wider contact patch on both the front and the rear. And it fully fill, fills the wheel well, so you can't really go to any wider of a tire, I think. Okay. Um, so I think, you know, like, let's say you're going to get really serious. We could probably you know, put some Hoosiers on here, but then, you know, that's I'm a better driver first. Well, and then maybe that. you're going to have to have a trailer <laughs> at that point, too. Because yeah. Hoosiers will probably, like, wear out almost driving to and from the track. Um, but I think for what you're doing right now, this is a really good uh, combination. Looks great. So Jeannie, we uh, did a lot of stuff in the front of your car. Now I know one of your requests was you wanted to have a full functional trunk. Yep, uh, take stuff to the track, overnight bags, supplies, suit, helmet. Yep, and uh, so we did a lot of, took a lot of extra pains not to uh, intrude in here. Now, you probably remember your stock battery was here, right? It was a really big battery sitting right there. Yeah, so what we did is we installed the uh, KW HLS pump here. Uh, this is the hydraulic pump that operates your right eye control. Mm -hmm. And the control solenoid for the front end, that's over here too. Uh, to make room for all this, uh, we got rid of your heavy battery and we're running an anti-gravity lithium battery. And that's over here on this shelf where there was nothing there before. Um, the anti-gravity battery is cool. It only weighs 5.7 pounds and it's small and compact and it's almost as powerful as your stock battery. Um, so all together with the uh, HLS pump and the super light battery, the overall weight is slightly less than stock. So you didn't gain any weight. So that's, that's another plus. Um, remember we were talking about uh, how stiff your springs are mm -hmm. and, um, now that uh, we're really worried about the impact and chassis stiffness. Um, so we installed this uh, red line strut tower bar here. And what this does is it ties in your uh, strut towers and helps reduce torsional chassis flex. Yeah, um, this is gonna help a lot. Yeah, like these cars have pretty stiff chassis stock, but um, you know, with the aggressive spring rates we're running, um, we figured it could use all the help it could get. So this is gonna help pick up some of the stiffness. And to install the covers, we had to do a little bit of trimming on the plastic, but when everything's in place, you can't even tell. Looks looks great. I can't believe you fit all this new stuff in here. Yeah, it wasn't easy, but we got it done. So Jeannie, you gotta admit, like even though we've just started, your car looks pretty badass, like at this right eye with the wheels and it's nice and low. What do you, what do you think? It looks great. I can't wait to take it out. Yeah, and we've just begun to do things. I mean, next we're going to work on your engine. We're going to see how much power we can get out of it. Uh, we just dynoed it, and we made uh, 312 wheel horsepower, which is way more than what we thought. Really? Yeah, and then we can only get more from there. And then there's the aerodynamics, so can't wait to get going. The aero's going to look cool, but the engine work is definitely going to make a big difference, too. So you can take your car for a few weeks and try it out, and... Uh, bring it back and then we'll start working on the engine. Yeah, I'll definitely get you guys some feedback. Just want to say thanks to you and Moto IQ and everybody who helped contribute to putting this together. I'm so excited to take it out and um, 
do all the other stuff coming up next. Oh, next is the engine. <laughs> 